Nothing more exposes the absurdity of the Nazi ideal of an Aryan master race becoming lords of the earth, as Hitler put it, which continues today to attract neo-Nazis, than this photograph of a little baby girl named Hesse. She's quite charming. In 1935, the people of Germany swooned over this portrait, which appeared on the cover of a popular family magazine. This child was the winner in a nationwide contest run by Joseph Goebbels' propaganda ministry in a search for Nazi Germany's most beautiful Aryan baby. Actually, Goebbels simply could have used a photo of his own daughter, Hilde, Hildegard, who was little Hesse's age, and Hilde was very lovely. But something horrible was in store for Hilde. I'll tell you about that in a few minutes. The Nazis had a thing about Aryan beauty and Aryan perfection. For example, here's an image cast in bronze of the master race's ideal grown-up. And the walls and kiosks were plastered with posters of the perfect Aryan family. The photographer of the baby photo, as a prank and without informing the parents, sent the photograph to the propaganda ministry to be entered into the contest. When the parents saw their child on the magazine cover, instead of being delighted, they packed the suitcases, grabbed hold of little Hesse, and ran for their lives. And rightly so. The people on the photo committee at the propaganda ministry examined thousands of photos and, with Joseph Goebbels' final approval, chose for their pantheon of perfect Aryans a Jewish baby. It was only a matter of luck that little Hesse's family could get her out of there before she wound up with the hundreds of thousands of Jewish children throughout Europe who were killed, along with their entire families, by Nazi murderers. It was just as the German justice inspector Friedrich Kellner wrote in his diary, the Jews who left Germany should thank God. The treatment of Jews who remained is cruel, relentless, and inhuman. Their fate is pitiful. My name is Scott Kellner. I'm the editor and translator of the Cambridge University Press edition of my opposition, The Diary of Friedrich Kellner, a German against the Third Reich. And I am the grandson of Friedrich and Pauline Kellner. My grandfather wrote his diary so that future generations would have a weapon of truth, as he called it, with which they could fight their own Nazis, with which we can fight neo-Nazis, of which we sure do have an abundance. Our question has to be, and a question that today's Nazis need to think about, is how could these sentimental Germans, who gushed and swooned over this photo when they thought it was one of their own, how could they have participated in or looked on with complete indifference in the mass slaughter of children just like Hesse, Joseph Goebbels' choice for the very best? And another question, didn't these Nazi leaders who were judging others and who ordered the killings in the name of Aryan beauty and Aryan perfection, didn't they ever look in a mirror? I mean, what irony, it's comical. And how could the people who carried out their orders blind themselves to the immense absurdity? There's their drab-looking Fuhrer and all his henchmen, these lumps of humanity who were so far themselves from any semblance of the fit and handsome Aryan hero, and there they were arrogantly labeling other people as subhumans and marking them for murder. Friedrich Kellner wrote, we can see the Fuhrer's personal physician, Dr. Morell, and the circumference of this calorie hog. 
There was also the district leader, Heinrich Backhaus, who was hospitalized for overeating. The egg batter pancakes were not enough to remove the district leader, wrote Friedrich, but the packets of sausages proved his undoing. Before Backhaus's death from gluttony, he had been instrumental in rounding up Jewish children and their families and sending them to their deaths because they were not Aryans like him. The Nazis are masters at twisting things, said Friedrich, sadists masquerading as idealists. And they used the Jews as a scapegoat so that they, the Nazis, the originators of all the atrocities, will not be called to account. And Friedrich added, a great number of mentally inner German people succumb to this cunning deception. In the end, these resplendent examples of the master Aryan race, whose 1,000 year master nation collapsed after just 12 years, were reduced to biting into cyanide pills to avoid hanging from a rope for their crimes. But before Joseph Goebbels and his wife killed themselves, they murdered their six children. The oldest was 12 and the youngest four. The lovely Hildy had just turned 11. But our little Hesse grew up and flourished. She became a professor of chemistry and contributed her knowledge to the well-being of humanity. Not only was she, but she still is a truly beautiful person. Maybe, perhaps, neo-Nazis will have an epiphany of sorts, seeing this contrast between an innocent and lovely baby and the vile murderers who would have killed her, along with the tens of millions of other people whose deaths they caused in the most senseless and most unnecessary of wars. Maybe these neo-Nazis will set aside their allegiance to such small, mean men who deliberately harmed other people's children and then, when they lost the game, they murdered their own children. I mean, really, are you going to raise your arm and salute to such as that? There are many themes and topics in the Friedrich Kellner Diary. The index has over 1,500 subject headings, and it is both amazing and tragic to see how much of what he wrote then applies today. But if you're not in the mood for reading, I've placed some other videos on my YouTube channel about the variety of parallels between what Friedrich experienced and what is troubling our own times. In any case, I do appreciate your having watched this video, and I thank you.